it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful occasion, first of all, um, first service in Germany for some months, and uh, it's lovely to see um, uh, the building opened again, and, uh, and, and nice to, to uh, join together and, and worship God uh, in these surroundings once again. Also, uh, uh, I'm sure it hasn't escaped your attention, um, <laughs> for many of you, um, uh, it's, it's probably the main reason why you're here, but uh, it's a, a service of holy baptism this morning, and uh, somebody was saying that it's the first baptism in Germany for 23 years, so, so first service in Germany for four months, um, but first baptism in 23 years, so that's... Uh, when Bertie writes the, the history book of Romani, that will be a uh, no more thing uh, 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 component, I'm sure. So you're all you're all very very welcome. Um, obviously, we're we're living in in, uh, in sort of different times and all of that. Um, you know, Romani uh, is a reasonably small building. We can try and sort of um, observe certain things that we're supposed to be observing these days with the government and, and different uh, legislation and restrictions. So hopefully that's been a positive experience for you. <laughs> In other words, you got your squirt of sanitizer, you were showed to your seat, <laughs> and uh, if you need a tissue, stick up your hand. Um, and we'll get you safely out of the church as well um, at the end of the service. But, but please, uh, we're here to serve you. Everybody should have a service sheet or be able to see one. Um, and uh, I have a, a couple of other bits and pieces beyond that to, to round out the service. But uh, I'll let you know um, when you have to do anything, say anything, um, or, or sing anything. And Liliana's in good voice. I'm glad to hear that. And, uh, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead. Taking her out for anything, she is uh, she 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 is doing well. So um, I'll begin I'll begin our service this morning. And um, a warm welcome to everybody who's joining on Facebook. Uh, service is on Facebook Live even as we speak. Uh, so a warm welcome to anybody in the parish or any visitor who's joining us this morning as well. Uh, or indeed anybody who listens on playback uh, later on as well. If you could please respond with the words and also with you uh, when I when I give the greeting uh, and also with you. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We come now to a, a time of, of penitence, a time of confession, and, uh, where we say sorry to God for the things that we have erred and strayed in. So if you could please respond to Lord have mercy with Lord have mercy. Lord God, you created the world and made us in your own image. Forgive us when we turn away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And if you could please respond, Christ, have mercy. To Christ, have mercy. Lord God, through your Son, you overcame evil and death. Rescue us from slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And once again, Lord, have mercy. To Lord, have mercy. Lord God, by your Spirit, you restore us to fellowship with you and with one another. Breathe your love and freedom into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You should have uh, a little insert of hymns, and we're going uh, to sing our first hymn this morning by request, uh, which is uh, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Please stand. Thank <laughs> you.
and uh, we have some words here uh, from the College of the Day, a special prayer for this, the 8th Sunday after Trinity. Blessed are you, O Lord, and blessed are those who observe and keep your law. Help us to seek you with our whole heart, to delight in your commandments, and to walk in the glorious liberty given by your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Before the uh, uh, mother of Liliana, Susanna, uh, comes up to read today's Bible reading, I just wanted to um, uh, just share a couple of words uh, with you all. Um, uh, it's not a sermon, you get the sermon a little bit later, but uh, just uh, a little uh, preparation for the sermon. You've heard that uh, expression, I'm sure, many times, or used it, God moves in mysterious ways. Hands up if you've used it. Uh, no? <laughs> I thought everybody was going to put their hand. But anyway, yes, God moves in a mysterious way. And actually, those words are, um, they are from a, a, a hymn uh, by a, a man called William Cowper. Uh, and uh, originally it was uh, part of a, a bigger poem that the hymn came from. So the poem was called Light Shining Out of Darkness. I thought that was very relevant uh, for uh, such an occasion as this uh, when we, we think about Christ's light um, uh, and, and baby Liliana and, uh, and, and Christ living in, in baby Liliana um, as she gets older. Um, so uh, God moves in a mysterious way. Well, well kind of, um, that was written in a time by William Cowper where he was going through severe depression. And actually there was, um, there was uh, an episode of an attempted suicide after that by William Cowper. Uh, he was very, very depressed, very, um, and he wrote these words, God moves in a mysterious way. He, he was his wonders to perform. Um, you know, if you if you know the wider the wider him, and and the reason why he was writing it was to to try and get across this this picture of of how magnificent God is, how how um, how He knows everything, how how everything is in His hands, and it was it was trying to explain just how magnificent God is again. So relevant as we think of the work that God is going to do in Liliana's life and, and as we have been doing in all of our lives um, uh, ourselves. But sometimes people use those words, don't they? God moves in a mysterious way as a kind of a, it's almost like, ah, so God moves in a mysterious way and so I don't need to bother with him. You know, because I've never understand it anyway. And, and so, you know, he's just different from me, and, and let's forget about it. But that's not the way that they were intended, you see. And it's this idea that we shouldn't try and keep God at a distance. Because God, God is personal. And uh, God wants to be personal in, in all of our lives. Um, Jesus himself said in John chapter 13 verse 7 he said uh, uh, in, in reply to a certain incident he said you do not realise now what I am doing but later you will understand and so it's this idea that you may not always understand what God is doing but he knows what he's doing and it's something that we can trust in and we can trust him for baby Liliana as well. Um, God uh, will, will work in many wonderful ways in Liliana's life as she continues to grow. Susanna is going to... Uh, where are you going to stand, Susanna? You can stand 
on anywhere really. You can turn around and stand where you are and she's going to read our Bible reading. You all have it. Please look at it um, in your little service sheet. And, uh, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 to 13. God's marvelous plan for the Gentiles. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was was now which was not made known to people of in other generations as it is now being revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, at this grace was given me to teach the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heaven's realms. According to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which you are glory. Thank you, Susanna. If I could ask the parents and godparents, please, to, to stand. And uh, on your service sheet, uh, everybody, you will see on the front page uh, a section called the presentation. So uh, it's just the parents and godparents that have uh, something to say, but, but please follow along. All right. Folks, uh, in baptism, promises are made on behalf of this child, of Liliana. She must also be taught and encouraged in the Christian faith, and in due course directed towards confirmation. Therefore, I ask parents and godparents, Johnny, Susanna, Ryan, and Emer, will you accept the responsibilities placed on you in bringing Liliana for baptism and answer on her behalf. By your own prayers and example and by your teaching and love, will you encourage her in the life and faith of the Christian community? In baptism, Liliana begins her journey of faith. You speak for her today. Will you care for her and help her to take her place within the life and the worship of Christ Church. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. We don't like to give you everything at the one time. So you can space it out over the service. And uh, thank you very much. Before we uh, come to uh, the sermon today, let's say together the, the following prayer uh, on our ministry of the word. Let's say together. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and strength to our lives. Take and use us to love and serve all people in the power of the Holy Spirit, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, once again, it's lovely to see everybody here this morning. Um, 
the whole the whole church, and also uh, specifically uh, the family members of uh, Baby Liliana. You're you're all very welcome, godparents and and obviously parents as well, and the girl herself, who's uh, who's doing wonderful and uh, and looking wonderful. Um, so uh, uh, you're well turned out, Liliana. Um, a lady of fashion, I'm sure I can see very, very clearly. Um, if I could direct your attention for a few moments uh, to the Bible reading once again that uh, Susanna has just read. Um, for the last number of weeks, we have been working through this letter to the Ephesians, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So we have already looked at chapter 1 and chapter 2, and this is uh, coming into chapter 3 now. Uh, so uh, you'll remember hopefully what I said a little bit earlier about this whole idea of God moves in mysterious ways and, and, and so on and, and everything that that means uh, to us or, or when we say it. Um, uh, as uh, on a slightly less serious note, uh, I'm sure some of you um, back in the day were, were uh, fans of Blind Date, were you? Or, or maybe the more modern uh, version, well, it's not so much of a, a blind date, you know, that other, what do you call that other show? Take, Take me, me out. out. Take me out. Yeah, well, it, it, it's, less of a, it's less of a mystery. So uh, I'll stick with blind date for a moment then. And the whole idea of blind date uh, was that uh, somebody would ask three questions to three um, uh, very keen individuals looking to go for a date with... Uh, the, the person on the other side of the screen and, uh, uh, and then at a point uh, the mystery would be revealed, the screen would be pulled back and uh, uh, the person was probably either impressed or not impressed but they had, a, they had a number of days then to get to know the person which was probably more important. Anyway, keep that in your mind, mystery. This is what we're, we're talking about this morning in, in, in a bigger, more magnificent way because we are talking about the things of God, okay? Now, the last couple of weeks, as we've been working through uh, Ephesians, um, we have been looking at how uh, God has offered his saving grace to all people uh, through Christ. Uh, so, for every individual, uh, it was telling us in Ephesians that God has provided a means of rescue for them. Uh, he has provided a means of salvation. And that means uh, was uh, through Christ. For every individual, everybody here, God has included you in his, uh, his, his wonderful salvation plan. And then last week in particular we were talking about how um, in, in recognising that God has included us all in that salvation plan, the impact that that has on our human relationships, the relationships that we have with uh, our fellow human beings, whether they be people that we are particularly close to, people that we are not particularly close to, or people that we might even consider our enemies. Um, the Bible talks much about the relationship that we are supposed to have with our enemies uh, as well. So it's this idea that uh, if you, if you, if you recognise what I'm doing here at the moment, if I'm making the shape of a cross, right, and uh, a cross has a, a vertical axis and it has a, a horizontal axis, and the vertical axis is your relationship with God. So this is us. And this is God. And uh, when we are reconciled to God in Christ, okay, that's, that's the, the vertical axis of the cross. But then the horizontal axis is our reconciliation with each other. Um, and when the, the Bible tells us, this letter to the Ephesians tells us that when your relationship is reconciled to God, then that opens up all kinds of possibilities in terms of how you interact and how you get on with and, and most importantly how you love other people. It, 
it, it allows us to love people that we would never think of loving. Right? Jesus said in, elsewhere in the Bible, he said, you know, even, even an evil person knows how to give good gifts to their children. You know? But it's a different story when you're talking about your enemies or you're talking about somebody that you wouldn't have an awful lot of time for. But because of the cross, because of what Jesus has done, because of our reconciliation in God, then that means that we can now look at the thing differently. And it, it means that people who were here on to considered not our friends can now be our friends. So, that leads us into today's passage, right? And if you look at it there, I'm going to uh, refer to a couple of bits and pieces as I go. Uh, and uh, Paul, oh, that's a bit of hay in my, in my hair. Where did that come from? Huh? <laughs> you get all kinds of things, Bertie Germanic. Huh? So you do. At least there's not a wee bird. You get no, no tea. <laughs> there, huh? You'll have to take the tea before you come out. Um, anyway, um, Paul says, do you see it there in verse 1? Please have a look at it. He says, for this reason. So you might be thinking, well, what reason? Well, for that reason, that I'm, all those things that I'm after saying. For this reason, people have been brought together, right, in Christ. People uh, have been built up together into God's church. I'm not talking about a particular church building. I'm talking about the church, which is the people of God, right? No matter who you are, where you're from, uh, how you've grown up, um, what your, your, your culture is or your nationality or, or even your religion, none of those things are a barrier to being part of God's church, his people that have been redeemed. Uh, through his son Jesus. So for this reason, Paul, who is a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and we'll come back to that in a moment, uh, and he says, for the sake of you Gentiles, very, very simply, a Gentile is somebody who is not a Jew. The Jews were God's original people. All through the Bible, the Jews were the people that God was working uh, in and through, but, but now um, Paul is saying this message is also for the Gentiles. In other words, it is for everybody. People that the message originally was not for, or, or who they thought it was not for, it is for. This was God's plan all along. But he was taking his time to reveal his plan. You might say God moves in mysterious ways. Well, you could say that, but God moves in the way in which he wants to. And he takes the time that he wants to, to work these things out in people's lives. So, uh, verse 1 to 5 there, that's, that's basically talking about that what was hidden previously has been revealed. So, God's plan for the nations Although it was previously hidden, it is now, if you look at verse 5, he says, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. So, um, because Christ has torn down the barrier between people, then the gospel message is now for everybody. Paul is in prison, probably in Rome, probably around the, 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 the date AD 62, they reckon somewhere around there. Um, but Paul's commission was to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. And he says, therefore, he says, you probably have heard about this. You probably have heard what happened to me. Um, he says that... Uh, I, I wasn't minded to preach anything to the Gentiles. I was a Jew. I was an ardent Jew. And to be quite frank with you, I hated the Gentiles. I persecuted them. I may even have murdered them. I certainly watched while other people murdered them. 
But now, following God's rescue plan to me, my relationship to you has completely changed. Now I want to see you have what I have. Now God wants to use me to tell you these wonderful things. And this, this is what Paul is saying. God's plan is the full extent of his love for the nations. You know, as human beings, we like to keep things for ourselves, don't we? This was kind of the way that the Jewish people went on. You see, God was only for them. The other people, the other nations, etc., etc., they worshipped their own gods. They were immoral. They were, they were pagans. They were this, that, and the other. They were everything that they wanted to call them or treat them as. But God says, actually, no. My love knows no limits. Christ died for everybody. If you think about that even just for two seconds, Christ died for everybody. He died for you. What can we say to that? God moves in mysterious ways. God moves in magnificent ways. God can rescue the Gentiles. Then he can rescue any of us. Because we're all Gentiles, we're not Jews, so we're Gentiles. God can rescue any one of us when we reach out for him. So that's the, the first little bit there. What was previously hidden has now been revealed. You see, all throughout the Old Testament, the prophets and, and all the rest of it, as they were preaching God's word, they, they were preaching but they never knew the full picture, if you like. They, 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 were, they, were, they were preaching what they had to hand, but they never knew the full picture of how it would all turn out. God was waiting for his perfect timing to work all these things out. And you see, um, the second point then is that um, the revelation, God's plan revealed, is surprising and it is distributed by surprising people. So what do I mean by that? Well, these people, as I've already kind of tried to explain, these people were previously cut off. They were not God's people. And they had no hope. Can you imagine what it's like to have no hope? No hope and no hope of hope. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing. There's, there's many people in the world nowadays and they've got no hope. Hopeless, and they can't see tomorrow. And you know, imagine not having even the possibility of coming to know God. You see, sometimes, sometimes we have got so much access to God that we take Him for granted. You know, we live in a country where it's so so simple to go to church, to follow God, to read the Bible, to whatever. And because those things are so, so simple, quite often we don't even bother. But for people in other countries all over the world, those things are not simple. And they often lead to, as Paul here, they often lead to being jailed, being persecuted physically, tortured, Losing everything that they ever had, estranged from their family, killed often. Even as we speak, people are being killed for following Jesus. Um, and we, we can be so complacent. And the thing is, you see, the Gentiles were cut off from God's promises. And Many of the Jewish people, Paul included, they were happy for them to be cut off. You know? Because they, that, 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 that allowed them to feel superior. It allowed them to say, you know what, God loves me, but he could never love you. You're, you're beyond the pale. What, what, what interest does God have in you? There's a lot of people in this world nowadays and they have believed that lie as well. What would God want? 
with me. I'm not good enough for God. I'm not good enough to follow him. He has no interest in me. And, and we often, you see, this is where the relationships come in again because people use their relationships with other people to keep them away from God. So they'll say, well, I'm not going to go to that church because such and such said something to me 20 years ago. Or such and such said something to my father 50 years ago and my father's dead 40 years. But I'll never go back to that church. I'll never go back to whatever. I'll, I'll never go here. I'll never go there. I'll never talk to this person. It's, it's almost like things that are broken cannot be fixed. But they can always be fixed. They have been fixed. In Jesus, Jesus says, everything is fixed. But do you believe it? Is the question. You see, everybody is now on a level playing field. From, you know, Jesus said, the, the first will be last, and the last will be first. Um, as I say, that extends to all areas of our life. It extends to religion, it extends to social status, it extends to, um, to our, our colour, it extends to our nationality, it extends to anything and everything that you can think of. And we hear about all these things nowadays in the news all the time about difference. Human beings love difference. But in Jesus' eyes, everybody is the same. Everybody. Because he made us all. And he loves us all. And you see, Paul, Paul was a, a devout Jew and in his eyes he thought that, that it was the right thing to persecute people who were not Jews. Even though Paul, and he says it himself time and time again and he says it later on here, he says, I am the least of all the Lord's people. See, Paul, even though Paul was very, very religious, it didn't cause him to love, it caused him to hate. Religion can do that to you. There's a lot of religious people in Northern Ireland, and there's a lot of hatred. And it's all over the world as well, it's not just Northern Ireland, you know. But it's different when you say you are in Christ. When you are in Christ, hatred ceases and people who previously were not together Paul he persecuted the Gentiles and then when God reached into Paul's heart and said what are you doing Paul why are you persecuting me you're not persecuting these people you're persecuting me the problem with your relationship is with me is with God that's the problem here Paul and once that was sorted out Paul, as he says himself, I am doing all these things. I am even going to prison. I am being flogged. I am being beaten. Paul was eventually, uh, uh, he was eventually uh, uh, executed for following Jesus. For the sake of the Gentiles. The people who he previously hated. He now loved more than he ever could. So, it's a surprising message and God uses surprising people to share it. And finally, you see, it says here in, in verse 10, God's intent. His intent was that now through the church, you see, the church is God's chosen instrument. The church. Now a lot of people say, oh, what about the church? So the church is, what use is the church? You know, or they, they think of a particular church. They think of Dramani, or they think of some other church. They think, ah, oh, you know, and they remember maybe, they remember maybe sometimes that the church has done them harm, or they, they associate, you know, that people have said hurtful things maybe. Sometimes they get over it. They should. 
there's forgiveness in Christ for everybody. But oftentimes people don't get over it. But God is saying that the church is actually quite wonderful because the church is my redeemed people. The church is the people that Jesus has died for. And the church is the thing that I'm going to use in all their weakness. I am going to use the church to take this message to the nations. Even, you see it says there, it's, a, it's a, an interesting line, isn't it? Verse 10 says, Through the church, the manifold wisdom of God would be made known even to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. What, what, what is that all about? Well, very simple. Through what God has done for the people in the church, even the angels now understand God's purposes. Because they didn't originally either. And even the devil, he didn't know. He's a fallen angel. He didn't know the extent of God's purposes for humanity. He tries to, he tries to prevent them at every opportunity. But even Satan found out the extent of God's love for the nations. That's that's the, uh, the, the that's how much God thinks of the church, according to His eternal purpose that He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, that means, what does that mean? Well, if you read with me, please, verse 12. It says, In him, Christ, in Christ, and through faith in Christ, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. You say here this morning, I could never approach God. God doesn't love me, and how could he ever love me? The Bible says different. It says, in Christ, and through faith in Christ, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This message, Paul says, may get us into trouble sometimes because people won't like it. <laughs> but he says, share it. And share it generously with anybody and everybody that you meet because I died for them. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. Oh, where do we start, Lord? We thank you for your wonderful generosity in Christ. So often, Lord, we feel a distance between us and you. But it is us that have created that distance, Lord. It is not you, because in Christ you have come close. You have done everything that is necessary for your people to be redeemed. Lord, each and every one of us here this morning, we all have our own lives. We all have our own circumstances. We all have our own thoughts. You have created each and every one of us. Wonderfully and fearfully made are we. And Lord, most importantly, you know each and every one of our hearts and where we stand before you. And we just pray, Lord, that rather than holding you at a distance, Lord, that we would call upon your name and seek to walk with you and to know you. Thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, we know that when our relationship with you is reconciled, then that can mean that our relationships with everyone else can also be reconciled. So we pray for that reconciliation this morning. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
please turn to the section on your uh, your service sheet entitled the decision. So it's it's over at least um, the decision. Uh, once again, the majority of the work will be done by the parents and the godparents. Not work. Work's been done, not right, Susanna? <laughs> work has been done. Hi, Chris. We have remarkably little to do. But we do have a few things to say. And so, mostly the parents and godparents are going to say this section as well. But the congregation have one line. So don't drop off. Get ready. And uh, I'll give you a shout when it comes to your time. So, once again, uh, parents and godparents uh, in baptism. I think you just wouldn't like being at the front of the church. <laughs> in baptism, God calls us from darkness to his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. So parents and godparents, I ask you, do you reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and the corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? Congregation, um, you have heard these are brothers and sisters responding to Christ. Will you support them in their calling? Lydia, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Live as a disciple of Christ. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. And keep the faith. We say together. Confess Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. And look for his coming in glory. Please stand. We're going to sing our second hymn. Which is uh, Jesus loves me.
our baptism section. Many moons ago I used to work in construction and uh, you'd be doing a, a bit of concreting. I'm sure everybody knows or has done a bit of concreting over the years, whether at your own house or, or somewhere else. And uh, there used to be an expression um, that if it wasn't that great a piece of concreting or something, um, somebody would say, oh, it's very agricultural. <laughs> you ever hear that? Ever hear that expression? Whereas maybe um, uh, in other ways the, the standard would be so much higher. So uh, I hope you don't think my uh, baptism preparation is very agricultural. <laughs> but uh, I came up with it myself. <laughs> and uh, I uh, borrowed everything that I could from my own baby. And uh, she didn't miss it for, for a little while. So in these uh, coronavirus days and, and everything else, um, contact obviously is a big thing, isn't it, with people and uh, see them during baptism. So um, I've already told Johnny and Susanna that I won't be borrowing their baby this morning and she won't be going for any ground around the church. <laughs> 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 well, you take her for a <laughs> um, And uh, I won't be taking her for any grand tours around the church. Sometimes do that, you see. And uh, I have these little cotton wool things, buds, um, uh, and, uh, and a glove. So uh, hopefully that will be all very uh, above board. I'm going to invite this time the parents and godparents, please, to come a little bit closer to the font. And uh, once again, if I could invite you all to look at the uh, section entitled Baptism, the first little bit is for the congregation, and then uh, uh, more specifically then for the sponsors. So congregation, praise God who made heaven and earth. He keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We say together, we give you thanks that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery, into freedom, and brought them through the river Jordan to new life in the land of promise. Amen. Once again, Johnny, Susanna, Ryan, Emer, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which Liliana is to be baptized? I do. And congregation, brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess along with the candidates the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made all things? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You see, it was just a storm before the canal, all of them, you know. We knew, we knew that she would, uh, we knew that she would come good. <laughs> Grandparents knew that she would come good, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm finished, yeah. Look at this fancy, <laughs> look at this fancy glove. Uh, no expense spared. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm going to take this uh, little, little bud. Uh, Johnny and Susanna, uh, could I ask you to please name this child? Liliana Jean. Liliana Jane Cathcart. I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, all right. <laughs> May Almighty God deliver you from the power.
restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. God has called you into his church. So we say it together. We therefore receive and welcome you as a member of the house of the body of Christ, as a child of the one heavenly Father, and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Amen. Please give her a clap.
but there is a uh, facility for an offering on your way out and uh, uh, in a wee minute after the hymn uh, when you are all dismissed as such um, we will we will move out steadily and leave plenty of space and if you want to make an offering you can and, you, know, you don't have to but if you want to um, and then the next person can come along and, and so on. The wardens will, will show you how that all works um, uh, at the end of the service. So we're going to stand and sing. Liliana loves singing. And we're going to sing, And can it be that I should be? Please come. <laughs>
that song. So, well done to Liana, you've got a great set of drums. And uh, just like my lead girl, you'll keep these guys on our toes, on our toes. They have been already. And uh, you know, Liliana has been a part of the church for a long time now, ever since she was born. But it's wonderful to be able to formally welcome you, Liliana, uh, into the congregation. And we look forward to uh, many wonderful days ahead with you uh, in the future. Some words of blessing. Gracious God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have brought us from death to life, and we dedicate ourselves to you. Produce in us the fruit of your Spirit. Equip us to serve your people and advance your gospel in the world. Enable us to live holy, righteous lives, and to please you in all that we do. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. So once again, if you could just leave a little bit of space, uh, let, let the people ahead of you, um, not yet, Mary. <laughs> let, let, let the people ahead of you uh, give them plenty of space and uh, say these words of the God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place of the saints in light. Liliana has received the light of Christ. Walk in this life all the days of your life. And we say together, shine as a light in the world to the glory of God.